Is it sciatica or is it piriformis syndrome? Let's talk about that in just a moment. This question can be a really tricky question because I see a lot of folks blaming piriformis for all kinds of symptoms, namely sciatica types of symptoms. And I find that often it's not really the case. So let's get clear on what the symptoms of piriformis tension actually feel like and how you can tell the difference between whether or not you have sciatica or piriformis syndrome. So we're gonna talk about what this muscle is, where it lives, what its job is, what it does, its relationship to the sciatic nerve, and then what those symptoms are that would be specific to piriformis and perhaps compressing on the sciatic nerve. And then maybe why that stretch isn't actually helping you to feel better. So the first point, where does piriformis live anyway? So you can see in the picture here that the piriformis is a thin, flat muscle that goes from the sacrum, that bone dangling off the bottom of your spine, across deep in the buttocks to the top of the femur, just as it's about to dive into the hip joint. So from the sacrum, deep in the buttocks, across over to the top of the femur. So this muscle then, when it contracts, is going to pull on that femur. Now it's attached to a little bit the back of the femur, so it's gonna kind of pull that femur in a rotation. And that's its most famous job, right? Is external rotation at the hip, turning the leg, and then perhaps at the end of that line is the foot. And that's often what people say. They say, oh, well, my foot's turned out, or my thigh's turned out, so my piriformis must be short and the cause of all this problem. So I wanna talk a moment about these other muscles that contribute to external rotation that actually are stronger external rotators of the hip than piriformis. You have nine other muscles that externally rotate the hip, turn the leg and the foot out. The biggest one and the one that has the strongest pull is gluteus maximus. That's a big muscle and it has a very strong pull on the femur in that rotation little bit of gluteus minimus and gluteus medius, depending on the position of the thigh, they also contribute to external rotation. Then there's six deep lateral hip rotators that live deep in the buttocks. They also have a strong pull in external rotation. Piriformis supports that movement and helps a little bit of stability of that hip joint, but it's not the main muscle that causes external rotation. So. I don't like to use that the foot is externally rotated to necessarily indicate that there's tension or shortening of the piriformis muscle. So now that you know where it lives and basically what it does, that it supports rotation at the femur, I wanna to talk to you about where it is relative to the sciatic nerve. So the sciatic nerve exits above the sacrum exits the lumbar spine, comes down behind the sacrum, and exits just along that inside attachment or that medial attachment of the piriformis. So it goes right behind that inner or medial attachment of piriformis. Yes, if the piriformis is really tight and there's a pull at the sacrum there, yes, the there can be a little bit of a compression of the sciatic nerve. And it's really kind of the edge of the sciatic nerve. So my experience again is thousands of people with these symptoms, most of the time piriformis is not the number one player. It's not the main cause of their symptoms. I'm gonna check glutes first. I'm gonna go into a lot of other things before I'm gonna sort of narrow and isolate the piriformis specifically. So yes, it can compress on that sciatic nerve. And then what would be the symptoms of piriformis tension? Well, piriformis tension can feel like an ache at the sacrum, and it can feel like an ache at the outer hip. Occasionally, that piriformis tension is gonna ache a little bit down the hamstrings. Following the sciatic nerve, yes, and it can create that ache down the hamstrings. It can, if it is pushing more and more, lots of tension on the sciatic nerve, 
it can create some numbness, tingling, radiating pain down the hamstrings, into the calf, maybe even into the foot. But really primarily, the piriformis tends to ache just down the hamstrings and not all the way down to the foot. Right? It'd have to be pretty severely tense and stuck, which does happen, but it's a little less common than just the hamstring ache or the ache in the buttocks. Now, that would be piriformis syndrome. Sciatica symptoms tend to start higher than piriformis syndrome symptoms. They're gonna to tend to start in that lumbar area, in the low back, and because there's often a herniated disc or disc issue or a curvature in the spine or the pelvis is not level, all of those conditions that lead to true sciatica, there's also gonna be a bunch of other symptoms. So the symptoms are gonna start higher than piriformis syndrome. They're gonna have a very lightning-like quality or burning sensation. They're going to have um, maybe weakness in the hip, but really typically what we wanna focus on for this conversation is that the symptoms start higher and they tend to be more pronounced all the way down to the, to the foot as opposed to uh, just an aching. Again, very rare for piriformis to get so tense that it's really putting a lot of pressure on that sciatic nerve and causing those sciatica symptoms. True sciatica starts above, piriformis tends to start lower in the buttocks and at the bottom of the sacrum and maybe radiating downward. Neither sciatica nor piriformis syndrome include radiating ache, numbing, tingling down the iliotibial band, neither one. Neither sciatica, true sciatica, nor piriformis syndrome are going to include radiating aching down the iliotibial band. That's a function of false sciatica, and you'll wanna watch this video right here to get clear on true and false sciatica, and then learning the steps to take care of false sciatica symptoms in your body if you're having that aching down the iliotibial band. So it's not piriformis syndrome then, and it's not true sciatica. So many parts of this conversation, right? There's so many pieces. So the last piece I want to address in this particular video is why does that stretch? Why does everyone tell me to do that stretch, right? That figure four stretch where you cross the ankle over the other thigh and then you're pulling, pulling, pulling. Um, why is that not effective? Well, really understanding that first of all, when muscles are holding tension, they don't like to be pulled on because they're pulling back like this. They're drawing in towards center and a stretch is pulling the ends apart away from center. So if a muscle is stuck, it's drawing in towards center and you start pulling on it the opposite way, it might go, oh no, I'm gonna tear and it might actually pull back more strongly. So if you are stretching those hip rotators and that piriformis with that, figure four, ankle crossed over the opposite side, common stretch that everyone is told to do, or in yoga, a pigeon preparation, where you get down on the floor, you put, you sink, 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 right? Trying to stretch that piriformis, stretch those hip rotators, right? And sometimes it's gonna make it worse if there is tension already held. So if you're doing that stretch and it's making you worse, please don't keep doing it expecting a different outcome. Right? You keep doing the same thing, you're gonna get the same thing and you might actually be aggravating the tissues and aggravating the compression on the sciatic nerve if there is one. What you'd wanna do instead is use a really soft ball. Get your little soft blue free body ball, do a little warming up in that area and then you can go real specifically to the ends of piriformis and release that muscle then you can do some movement and a little bit of stretching. If you are, if you don't have a ball with you and you are gonna do that stretch, you'll wanna follow this video right here which shows you the proper way to do that piriformis stretch with a little engagement so that you don't freak the muscle out and cause it to spasm and contract even more because that's not helping you, right? So, quick recap. Piriformis syndrome, sciatica have different symptoms, 
right? Similar, because they can both radiate down the back of the leg. True sciatica tends to start above. Piriformis syndrome tends to start right at that intersection at the sacrum and then radiate downward, often not below the knee, often not below the knee. Neither one has symptoms down the outside of the leg. That's gonna be false sciatica and you're gonna wanna take care of that differently. And piriformis syndrome also would include like sitting too long, that's gonna hurt. Going upstairs, that's gonna hurt, right? Um, and then understanding if you are going to stretch that piriformis that you'll probably wanna do some self trigger point release on it first to release the tension so that the muscle actually can expand, so that the muscle actually can open and you'll feel a lot better and you'll find that that stretch is way more effective. So I'm gonna keep up this conversation. We're gonna do a lot of videos on this particular topic of piriformis and sciatica because I find that it's a very misunderstood topic. So stay tuned, more to come. Thanks for watching.